Welcome back to the Inspired Entrepreneur with Heather Hope. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Heather Hope with the Inspired Entrepreneur podcast. How is your Tuesday? Happy Tuesday, guys. Okay, so I have had such an amazing morning, not to brag or anything, but um, I have been meditating and doing all my morning stuff consistently, daily, every single day. I've been using the habit tracker in my new uh, planner And which is super helpful because then, you know, you want that, like I do anyway, I want that bubble filled in every day. Like that's how I am. If I'm tracking something, I am so into that every day has to be, has to be done. It just has to be done. I don't know what it is with me. I don't think I have a competitive spirit, but I do. So anyway, um, Abraham Hicks. Okay. If you don't, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Heather and I talk about, and I teach the law of attraction. And on this channel, on this, on this uh, podcast, the inspired entrepreneur, I, I read a daily passage from my book, the inspired entrepreneur. You can find it on Amazon. And, um, I, I just, I go over all these principles and all these things around, the law of attraction and how the universe works. <laughs> and, and and it's based primarily off of Abraham Hicks and a few others like Sanaya Roman and Bashar, infinite intelligence just as a whole. Um, not too much from humans and their human belief systems, <laughs> but mostly from Abraham because I've listened to just thousands upon thousands of hours of Abraham. Really, it's been my full-time obsession for a couple of years now, like full-time, full-on, every single day, lots of it. And I just get a deeper, deeper, deeper understanding of things, and things become easier, and I attract things easier. It's just so cool. So um, one of the things that Abraham tells us is to meditate. Now, tons of people tell us to meditate these days, which I'm very happy about. In the past, I'm like, blah, 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 meditation. I don't even understand it. And when I was a therapist in the past, it was never, it was not one of those things that we talked about much, if at all. (laughs) It really wasn't. It's just not, at least years ago when I was a therapist, but maybe these days, I think these days, a lot more therapists are into stuff. I don't know, in the clinical practice, like in the actual agency, um, it's probably just touched upon here and there once in a while. Um, but anyway, so, so Abraham tells us to meditate and the reason, some of the reasons why is to let go of resistance. So what I've realized is that over the course of my lifetime, <laughs> I have he- I've had so much resistance and I felt it daily. Like I felt it every morning. I felt it. And it was the reason why I would have a lot of emotions or um or lack of emotions or sadness or anger or just not a nice person. And so the more I meditate, the nicer I become the calmer I become, the happier I become just naturally because it allows ourselves to get back into alignment, get back into who we really are, which is source. Like the larger part of us is a uh, non-physical source. And so this, this small part of us is human you know, spiritual being in a human body or whatever. And we're creating through being human and, and through expansion. Right. So anyway, so when I really get into religiously doing it daily, because 
so here's the, here's the reason why I am so adamant about, for me, doing something daily every single day. For me, now remember, you have to find what works for you. And that's all that matters. That's, that's everything for you, okay? You have to decipher like some advice that you get from other people. You have to decipher whether or not that's really going to work for you or if something else seems to work better for you. And so for me, it's, it's, it's kind of like the all or nothing. But for me, I have seen such a pattern. And, you know, I know every time I look at that pattern, I'm bringing it into the now. So it's something to work on. But in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, it's totally cool for me to do things daily. Because if I don't, I can have a tendency to completely fall off the wagon. Now, I know I just brought that back into my existence again. Um, so that's why it's a little bit of a difficulty to talk about everything. Because anytime I talk about something that I have done in the past, I bring it back into my now experience, like right now, right? Does that make sense? That's why it's it can be difficult to be a coach. That's why it can be difficult to be a therapist or anything because it's just everything you talk about, you're bringing it into the now, like right now. So um, the less I talk about how I used to be or how I have a tendency to be, the better. But so I choose wisely. I choose like with this habit tracker, it's a weekly planner. So it's a weekly habit tracker. Every week I can choose what I want to track. And it just keeps me aware. And it's really, I wanted that in my planner because every day I would write the same three things every single day to check off. And I didn't always do them. I didn't always do them. I would go weeks without meditating because I fell off the wagon. <laughs> it was just one of those things. And so now, now that I have them all in this little box and they're all next to each other and I get to fill in the bubbles every night... I want all the bubbles to fill in. That's just me. I want them all. You might be totally cool with be like, yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. Oh, well, no big deal. For me, I'm just like, I want them all done. <laughs> I want them all because I know I have chosen. I think there's five or six things on my habit tracker right now for this week. These are the things that I really find the most important to do every day. And like anything else in my life can kind of just fall in where it needs to be. But these are, these are kind of like the deal breakers for me. Like I have to do these things every day. And so the very first one is meditate. Meditate, do my 2021 list, my manifestation list. And I tweaked it over the weekend and I'll let you know what I did. That makes me feel so much better and different and one with everything. Um, and then I do my money journal. I have a 30 day money journal that I've been filling out and I'm, on, I'm doing it again. I just started again a couple days ago, a new 30 days. Um, and then I, what's okay. Those three things. I don't have it in front of me. I have it on my other desk. Um, walk because now I have my treadmill desk. So I walk every day. That's a given, except I did two minutes the other day because <laughs> I just was tired or something. So, um, and then water. Like water is really, Abraham has talked about water of like, if they were in our physical shoes, they would drink as much water as they possibly could because it's so good for our cells. So I fill those bubbles in every day. So there we go. Anyway, so I've been feeling incredible <laughs> because I have been meditating, relaxing my mind every single morning for the past, I think it's been two weeks now or something like that. And just feeling really good, really focusing on my happiness, focusing on like my journal asks, what's my goal of the day? Every single day I write joy or fun or both. That's all. I, like I have other things I'm doing every day, but those are the main, like that's the main thing to focus on is being happy, feeling happy. What can I do today to feel happy? meditate, think good thoughts, play with my puppy, you know, like do things for myself, make myself feel good. That's a prior, it's my number one priority in life. Because when I'm happy, 
my husband loves it. So the whole like thing, happy wife, happy life can seem like it's real, right? Obviously, but it's not my, but it's not my husband's job to make me happy. I hate that. Oh, it's such a thing. It's such a prevalent thing. And let me know if you're outside the U S let me know if it's something in your country too, because it's, it's absolutely ridiculous to <laughs> expect another human being to make you happy. It's ridiculous. They will never, it's your choice to be happy. You know what I mean? I can go on for hours on that subject, but I get to choose whether or not I'm happy in this moment. It's my choice. My husband can bend over backwards, but if I'm in a bad mood, it's my choice to, you know, to be happy in that moment. It's my choice. He can't do enough. And he does have that, that whole happy wife, happy life thing. And cause he's, he is a people pleaser. He wants to please me. And sometimes it gets annoying because I'm like, let me please myself. <laughs> let me, let me be happy. Like I'm going to be happy or I'm not. That's my choice. I get to choose my emotions. Now in the past, when I was really depressed, I would say, what the hell is this girl talking about? It's not a choice, blah, blah, blah. As a therapist, I was like really, you know, like chemical imbalance and blah, blah, all these things. It's such a mess. I'm so, I am insanely thankful that I'm out of that mess, out of my depressed mess and out of my therapist mess <laughs> because it was such a mess. And now I'm like, I'm just happy. I'm pleasing myself. I'm doing things for myself. I do things for him when I'm in alignment and I'm feeling really good and I want to do things for him. It makes me feel good. But I, I'm the one who gets to decide whether or not I'm going to be happy in any moment. So it's unconditional happiness, right? Whatever is going on, the condition going on, you get to, uh, choosing whether choosing your emotion. Am I going to be happy? Am I going to be neutral? Cause you can be neutral about something. You can be pissed off about something. That's totally fine. I, I get pissed off probably daily about something stupid or something basically everything's just basically dumb, but if I get mad about it, it's probably something I have zero control over it has nothing to do with me half the time. But, um, anyway, so let me go through. Oh, oh, so actually let me, I'm, there's a couple of things I want to tell you, but let's do today's thing because it's relevant to what I'm talking about. So February 9th, if you have my book, flip to February 9th, it's two sentences. You got to stop trying so hard. Let it flow with ease. Okay, let me grab my drink really quick. Okay, it's law of attraction. Attraction. Okay, <laughs> for the last several days, I've been listening to Abraham and really f just feeling intensely what they're saying about it's law of attraction, duh, but it's attraction. And when you can raise your vibration, which means raising your vibration, meaning getting into a place of feeling really good, that's raising your vibration, feeling happy, joy, loving that nice person, like, this morning, I think it was this morning or last night, I think it was both last night and this morning, I said, I just want to be happy. And I want to be a nice person, like really nice person. Because when I'm a nice person, I'm happy. When I'm happy, I'm a nice person. You know, like I love nice people. I love happy people. Like I love being around them. They're a joy, right? I want to be that person most of my day. I don't want to be that snarky girl. I don't want to be that sarcastic. I've been that girl forever. I, you know, once in a while, yeah, I can crack a lot of jokes. People tell me I'm funny all the time. And it doesn't have to be like mean joke. Like I'm not a mean person. Well, I am, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. We all can be. We all have a tendency. Like we all have, we all have a little bit of a side of us or a big side of us that can be because we can be anything. We, we can be anything, right? So we can have a moment where we're a total awful person to be around, but I want to be a really nice person because it feels so good to be nice to people. And when you're a nice person feeling good, you're going to attract really nice other people. And then you have these interactions with people that are so 
crazy good that you're just like, God, that was just the best experience ever. And it was like literally the, you know, least important conversation you had all day. It just, you know, those moments where it's just, you get along really well with people, you're matched up, it's law of attraction. So you attract how you're feeling. Okay, so you raise your vibration and, and one major way to do that is through meditation, 15, 20 minutes. I typically do about 20 minutes a morning at least. Uh, and, um, and you just relax, meditate, you know, no thought, chill out, go with uh, the feeling of floating or feeling free or feeling really good. And you raise your vibration. And you just keep it raised because that's your point of attraction, right? So you do that, you feel good. You're opening up your valve for things to come to you. So, and what I heard the other day, I wish I wrote it down about, so you have your desires, right? You have your step one, you, you ask for something that you want. And step two is you allow the universe to do it, to figure it out. Step three, you have to allow it in. So step three is that whole letting go, relaxing, meditating, allowing that to come in. So, and, and they said that you're either going to be a cooperating, cooperating component or you're not in whatever you're asking for, which means sometimes you'll be directed with thought or feeling about something and you're going to go towards it. And you can only do that if you have your vibration raised. So a lot of times I talk about like raising your vibration to the thing that you want. You really only need to raise your vibration to the feeling of what it's going to feel like to have that. And that's what I have done with my 2021 manifestation list. So if you don't know, every morning, I started this in December, every morning, after I meditate, the first thing I do after that is I, I have this one specific notebook and I write my coolest 2021 manifestations or my cool manifestations of 2021. Basically, it's I'm thinking it's the end of the year of 2021 and these are the things that happened this year that I'm sharing with whoever is asking or the world, whatever. And these are the coolest things that I can tell you that happened, like the coolest things. I'm not saying big. I'm not saying whatever. I'm saying these are the coolest things. These are the fun things that I was just like, yes, this is what happened this year. And so I write my thing. So number one, the first thing is there. The first thing I always write is we became millionaires this year. Like we became millionaires. So now I've incorporated the feeling. So I, I sat one day, it was a few, few mornings ago, and I thought, what would it feel like? What, what will it feel like when I become a millionaire? When I have millions in the bank, or at least a million in the bank, right? What will that feel like? So I sat, closed my eyes, and felt it. And I wrote down a few feeling words of what that would feel like. And I was feeling that. So then I wrote the next one and the next one, and I did that for every one of them. And now I do that every morning. And I wrote it all down. I have a little piece of paper with all of it. I pulled them all out of from that page, and I put them on a small piece of paper that I have on my desk. And if you want to hear them, let me grab them. Where are they? They're on my desk. Hold on one second. Okay, I probably should have just paused you guys, but I don't feel like it. Okay, so these are the, it's it's quite the list. And I wrote this down. So um, I wrote, I love feeling, and these are all of the words that I just have written down. Relieved, secure. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to actually talk into the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> I put my earphones in because I'm so used to talking through those. Okay. So I have this piece of paper on my desk and I bring it with me in my meditation room when I'm doing all this. So I love feeling relieved, 
secure, abundant, choosing, the feeling of being able to choose, unlimited, ease, luxury, unlimited, excited, relaxed or relaxation, anything, fun, wealth, anything is possible or everything is possible. Abundance, abundant, abundance of beauty, space, unlimited space, security, happy. I write happy a lot because it just, I'm, I know I'm happy. Blessed, dreams come true. I feel lucky, valued, important, heard, of course, like, of course that would happen. Of course, you know, the feeling of, yeah, of course that's going to, of course that happened. That's who I am, right? Um, feeling of home. I love feeling the fast, like, this is probably about my car. Fast, feeling great, sexy, healthy, loved, accomplished, thankful, comfort, and smiling the feeling of smiling. So those are, so those are just some of the words that I use every morning. I just go with whatever feels I do several with each statement. And I just kind of feel that for a few seconds or a minute. So it's, it's taking my, my morning exercise and just going deeper with it, with emotion. Because it's one thing to say it, but you have to really embody that emotion and start living from that emotion. So when I can pinpoint what the emotions are going to be, I can focus on feeling these emotions because this is raising your vibration. If you raise your vibration to these feelings, these emotions, then you are going to naturally attract the things that you have said that you want. Does that make sense? That's like everything right there. <laughs> so, so I focus on, I focus on the feeling, which is what Abraham has been telling us for a million ever years <laughs> to focus on the emotion, which I do, but sometimes I get caught up on the manifestation sometimes because it's there, you know, um, I just flipped over the page and I wrote vibrational reality equals our vortex. So our vortex, the, like it's, it's kind of like thinking of a place of where everything that we want is. Like everything that we've asked for is, is kind of like stored over in this vortex. That's what I kind of see it as. But in one of the recordings I had picked this out, they probably say it all the time when I just heard it, but how I probably have heard it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time. I'm like, I'll tell my husband something and then I'll end up with, well, it's everything that we've been saying all this whole time, but for some reason just sounds really good today again, because <laughs> I know that I've heard everything like all the time. So, but your vortex is your vibrational reality. It's all about vibration. So it's everything you want is in your vibrational reality. You just have to raise your vibration of whatever it's going to feel like to have that, to raise it to that point in any way that you can, any way that you can. So meditation is like the number one way. So take 20 minutes out of your day. So this morning I woke up at like eight, which is a little late for me on a Monday. So I have all these things I do in the morning and I needed to get ready and I needed to take my husband and... So I'm like, sometimes I, I get annoyed with having things out of order or out of order, meaning like I really, I, like I would prefer to get up at six and go meditate and then do my morning stuff, right? And get it all done before he even wakes up at eight or nine. And so this morning I woke up at eight. So I'm like, don't worry about it, Heather. You just put it, take it, you know, you just do everything still in the amount of time that you have, just it's out of order. It's no big deal. So, um, but hearing more and more and knowing how I feel, I am like, I, I print the meditation and then the other two things that I do, the writing, 
it's my number one priority. Because in order to attract everything I want to attract, I have to raise my vibration. Raising my vibration through meditation is an amazing, quick, easy way to do it. So if I want all these things on my list, you know, the things that I'm working towards every day, the, you know, some of the action that I take every day, meditating is going to help it so much more than the actual action does. But so law of attraction, it's all attraction. So going back to what I recently heard from Abraham is the whole, like, you have your desire, the universe says, okay, right? It's like, it's working out your, your inner being, which is the broader part of you has the broader part of you has its attention on what you want and it has major massive attraction power. So your inner being broader perspective has attraction power and it's attracting it to you. You have to raise your vibration to bring it in. You have to put your focus on it to bring it in. And they said that you're either going to be a cooperating component or you're not. So that means you're going to be inspired towards the path and inspired with the things to do to get there. Or it's just going to come to you in different ways through other people or, you know, things happen all the time where people, just, it just happens. It just comes to you or you get an idea and you follow through and then there it is. It's supposed to be so much easier than what we've made it out to be living life, right? This is all supposed to be so much easier. So <laughs> if you follow anybody any motivational speaker or any coach or anybody that says any of these stupid things, <laughs> sorry, about things needing to be hard. Oh gosh, I was on this thing last night. I could talk forever about this. So, oh God, if you listen to me, you know that I have this little thing. Well, there's a lot of time in the day and sometimes I'm on my treadmill and I'm watching stupid things. So, but I'm pretty selective, but I love like I got done with like 90 Day Fiance the other way and some other things like that. I don't watch every single season. I just watch what, what, whatever feels appealing. So, so a couple days ago, I started watching um, Married at First Sight. Now, I've said in the past, I, I probably shouldn't have worked towards, you know, wanting to be a psychologist and work towards being a sociologist because I'm actually more interested in what people do than why people do things. <laughs> I'm, I'm very fascinated with cultures and what people do. I'm not really as fascinated as I used to be because I think a lot of things that people do are just like sometimes very ridiculous. Anyway, and not very like happy or good. And then I have to tell myself, well, they're, they're choosing to live their life that way. This is their life. They get to choose whatever they want. So that's what they choose. So, um, so I was watching season eight of uh, Married at First Sight. I've seen many of the seasons. I got into it from the first season and then I didn't have cable for a while. So now I have Discovery Plus and I get to watch all this wonderful, wonderful quality TV. And so I don't watch a whole lot of TV, so I don't really watch much. My husband watches Cobra Kai and I make fun of it so badly because it's awful. It's so cheesy and insanely predictable, which pisses me off because <laughs> those are powerful words, Heather. But it's just like, it's just like, I just find it really dumb because I'm like, it's so predictable. Now, if you've watched Schitt's Creek, you know, it's really unpredictable like really off the wall, unpredictable. And I like that more because predictability is like, yawn, give me a break. You know, like, could you come up with something more original than that? You know what I mean? So it's like so predictable and he likes it, even though it's dumb, he knows it's dumb, but anyway, so we watch it. <laughs> so married at first sight season eight. Okay. 
any of them. It doesn't matter. But they talk about any relationship, anything, anybody who talks about relationships, say, let's talk about marriage, right? Marriage is hard. Marriage is a lot of work. Marriage is this, this, and this, and this, and this. And it's drilled in people's heads. <laughs> Terrible description. It's programmed in people's heads and th that those are true. And I got stuck into that. And, you know, when I when I was married or before I got married to my first husband, I mean, for my whole life, I was basically an atheist, maybe sometimes an agnostic. And then within about two or three years of our relationship, I became a Christian out of desperation. I'm not kidding. Out of desperation. Because I needed to feel good. Because I felt like shit all the time. Excuse my language. But so... It was, it was like a combination of Joyce Myers and Joel Osteen. Great messages. I mean, I don't, I don't knock them. Um, I just, I'm not into religion, I'm not into organized religion at all. So um, I got into that for a few years and it felt good. What didn't feel good was the whole idea of now I'm married and I've got to make this work and divorce is bad and marriage is a lot of hard work and it's difficult and all these belief systems that keep people married that probably shouldn't stay married right <laughs> so i get annoyed with the whole all of these things of all of that right because i am sitting so i have the contrast to know the difference i came from a marriage that was really really difficult really difficult but i believed I was believing people when they say it's difficult, but you got to stick with it. You got to really try hard and you really have to work hard at this and you really have to a million things. Right. And I got, and I got more and more and more depressed where I was becoming suicidal. So it's bad messaging in my opinion. I think it's terrible that you have to stick with something because otherwise it's a sin or something. I 100% don't believe any of that. I could have 20 more divorces. I don't care. Actually, I would never get married again. <laughs> I don't believe I would, but um, because I don't really necessarily believe in marriage, but that's me. Um, <laughs> because I, I understand what Abraham says when they say, you know, their marriage vows would be, you know, I like you pretty much. Let's see how this goes. I love that. Because I, you know, I laugh. I was on the treadmill the other night listening to these people and I'm like, how they throw the word forever around. And I started laughing. I'm like, man, you guys throw that word around a lot. That's a, that's a big word. And it's, it makes everything so much more serious and so like life or death, you know, decision making here. And it's not, it's not from a girl who only wanted to be married one time, and didn't want to be divorced. I can tell you there's nothing wrong with being married and divorced. And my current husband, Roger, we joke about this. I joke about this a lot because I'm sarcastic, right? <laughs> Playful sarcasm. Um, that I could be divorced again. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Now, do I want my marriage to end? Hell no. <laughs> I love my husband. I think he's the most amazing man ever. Um, all of that. But I don't have that fear around getting divorced. I went through it. It sucked. It only sucked because of the person I was with. It freaking sucked. Now it's like, but I can do it. I can do it. I'm very strong. I can do it. It's not a big deal. But I probably wouldn't be married again because it's just, I'm not sure if I see a lot of the things around it that are all that, I don't know. So I really like because we're growing and expanding and we're attracting and, you know, to have something tie us down so much and it's really, it doesn't have to, this is paperwork. It's not, you know, you can go to the court and you can file for divorce. Arizona is pretty easy. You can, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Now being tied financially with somebody is kind of, not my favorite thing to have. I don't I don't see a benefit of it at all being tied to somebody financially. I, I I'm not, you know, I don't think about it 
hard. I never think about it, but it, if I had to come up with a pro a con list of getting married, that would be one of them. Like I, I'm, I'm an individual. I'm a, my own person. And I don't think it's fair to be grouped with another person. <laughs> and so anyway, it really, it, it makes no difference in my life at this point, but, um, but anyway, but listening to these people and all of these belief systems that society and their family have, per, you know, have laid the law, basically, I, I'm just like, it really screws people up. And it really can, you know, these belief systems really can put a person in a tailspin and depressed and feeling like a failure because a bunch of people are telling them that they are. And it's like, no, you're just living your life. And you can live it any way you want. So I don't care if people get married or not. It's none of my business, right? <laughs> it's just whatever somebody values that's important to just make sure that it, it's it's something that you value for the right reasons for you and not because society or your family or whoever. Make sure that you honestly want what you want. It has nothing to do with and be okay with a relationship not working out because my attitude is there's, you know, when I was single, um, I, I had this, I, I was, or when I was a love coach or whatever, whenever it was, I had this attitude of, you know, like when Abraham says like, well, my ship has sailed and I don't know, you know, when the next one, there's another ship coming in. So, from experience, I would say, because you really understand something through um, experience, right? There's another man around the corner. There's another woman around the corner. Not saying that they're perfect for you, but I'm saying that there's an abundance of men and women out there. Seven and a half billion people in this world. There is another one. <laughs> there's another one. And there's probably even a better match for you. There's probably an even better match than my husband for me because, you know, he is really, I was telling him just last night after watching that, that season and how weird these guys were, two of them were just not like the kind of men that I ever have ever met throughout my whole dating life. I've never met men like this, but I do know there's a lot of different ways. I don't know how to explain it, but so I told my husband how normal he is. He's the most normal guy I have ever dated or married, I guess. But any, any, he, out of, you know, a few dozen relationships I've had now I've had too long. I've had, a you know, I've had, when I'm single, I've, I date a lot. I've only been single a couple times in my adult life, but when I'm single for like a year, two years, somewhere in there, it's like the longest I've been single. I date a lot. I don't know. It's just really interesting. I find it kind of fun until it's not, <laughs> and then it's, then it's not fun. But, um, so I've, I've, I have met a lot of men and I've had a lot of different kinds of relationships and, um, I have never met anybody so freaking normal than my husband. And then I told him, wait a minute. Now, if you're the normal one out of all this bunch, then that makes them normal and you're actually abnormal. And then he didn't like the sound of that. But um, he likes the term unicorn. And I laugh because it's funny because he, you know, we joke about we can inflate his ego pretty quickly. But um, he's a unicorn. I'm like, well, maybe you're just an outlier. I think that's really the appropriate. <laughs> and I'm an outlier. I know that in different ways. But um, anyway, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say after that. But it's don't get caught up in other people's belief systems. So let's get back to this and then we're going to wrap this up because I, I got to. I got to get some more water. I say this after every episode now. Okay, so you got to stop trying so hard. Let it flow with ease. So the trying so hard is what makes, what slows things down. The trying too hard. Because it's attraction. 
It's not, okay, I put it on a list. I ask for it every day. Now I got to figure out how to make it. No, you don't figure out anything. You don't figure it out. You go meditate. You go chill out. You go make yourself really happy. You occupy your time with things that you enjoy. Now, of course, most likely you have a job or a business or whatever, right? You have some way of bringing in money. You do that. You do that, but you, you work on the joy while you're doing that. But you have, you have all this stuff in your vortex and your job is to just relax about it and about life in general. And you allow it in. Be happy on the journey. Be happy in your life right now. Be happy. Work on the happiness and then everything else works itself in. Is that helpful? <laughs> That's all you got to do. So meditate. Meditate. Do things that you like doing. Make yourself happy. Don't depend on other people to make you happy because it's your choice to be happy. Right? Okay, I'm going to go because now we're at like 40 minutes and yeah. So I'll be back tomorrow, guys. Uh, have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. Bye guys.